Hi there, and welcome to another Transformers review, and this one is going to be Jurassic. Still uh, dealing with some voice issues, so please bear with me. Thank you. This one is uh, brought to you by good brother Bill Pagan. Bill, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that. You didn't have to, but I, I so appreciate that you did. This is for uh, TTGS11. It's from Japan, but it was available on Hasbro Pulse, uh, and it, I believe it's still on there, actually, if you wanted to pick it up. The big gimmick with this one, it's the Dinobots, the five original Dinobots, um, about the same size, and I'll bring out the originals to do uh, a comparison of each one with his G1 version. But um, the uh, big gimmick here is that they combine. So when Predacon came out, I always thought they were the counterpart of the Dinobots, five Predacons, five Dinobots. But it was so cool that the Predacons could combine into Predaking and Meanwhile, the Dinobots couldn't, and now they finally can. Finally, an official Dinobot combiner. I uh, love the paint job on these. Just taking a look at the um, the exterior on them. Really, really nice paint job. If the uh, Super 7 Silverhawks have something like that, I know the prototype images of those have been released, and they don't look all that glossy. I kind of like the, uh, the cartoon look of those, but um, if you can't go chrome, then this type of silvery shimmery um, paint is not a bad way to go i always love seeing swoop with uh blue instead of red since the g1 version had a red body but in the cartoon he had blue they all seem to be able to yeah open up their mouths just like the g1 versions on sludge as well grimlock grimlock's head actually goes up quite a bit so that he can open his mouth even more. <laughs> Holy smokes. He can really uh, lay down a suppressing fire with that. And then there's slag as well. Speaking of laying down a suppressing fire. And finally Snarl, who's the, the G1 didn't have a mouth. This one doesn't either, but he's got his little... Um, oh, that's cool. These look like they're a little more durable than the G1 version is. They're kind of floppy. So not as susceptible to breaking. And then tons of accessories. Lots of them. Cool looking sword. It's going to be very interesting for me because I know nothing about this. Um, hadn't heard of it. Um, didn't Wasn't looking at pictures or reviews. Didn't even know it existed. So let's start with the king. And... Alongside his G1 version, so I would say that the G1 version looks more like a real Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, this to me seems like some sacrifices were made in order to make him the body of the combiner, and that happens all the time with the combiners. In order for everyone to connect, then uh, they have to make a certain part longer than it should be, um, a certain part wider. The, the tail looks like it's it's wider than it should be. So uh, as far as dino modes go, um, this one seems to be less true to the original Grimlock dino mode than the uh, the other four Dinobots that were included in this set. But there's quite a bit still that it is bang on. The head is exactly like the original head and he's even got these little tiny T-Rex arms that move around. It's kind of like the uh, Masterpiece, the official Takara Masterpiece Grimlock. Cool that there's some a little bit of articulation in there and the legs. They do have a, a bendable uh, knee joint but like it's there's not much you can do with it. You can sort of give him a running pose. The tail. Oh, that's cool. How about that? The tail actually uh, does move back a bit so you can sort of it's all coming apart on me now but you can s well, that's cool that's cool all right um, that looks better than I had him uh, much better and just doing that one little tweak actually works wonders for him that's great much better and like that modern construct concept that I looked at a while back you can actually store some of the weapons on Grimlock in dino mode. So you take this weapon right here and it fits together.
together like that. And that plugs onto his back somewhere. We've got some holes right here on his back and there's some squares right there that look like they should fit in there. Easy. That's great. That actually helps quite a bit. The, um, the uh, tail being a little bit bigger than it should be. Uh, it feels like his, his body needs to be filled out a little bit more. So sometimes it looks a little weird adding weapons on, like adding weapons onto the Constructicons in truck mode. But uh, I think that helps a lot. And then the feet of Volcanicus can plug onto uh, the legs of Grimlock by plugging this post right into that hole right there. This feels more like all those weapons on long haul. That's um, just trying to find a place to, to plug something in so that it's there. Does it add to the look? This little chest plate keeps separating. Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't personally go with the feet plugged onto the sides there, but I really do like um, that gun, especially since it does resemble Grimlock's G1 gun. He had a double barrel blaster. And to transform him into robot mode, it's actually similar to his G1 mode. Head goes back exactly the same way. I, I'm talking, it feels exactly like G1 uh, Grimlock feels when you're transforming him, because there's a certain there's a certain way to do it, to not break it. And I've done that so many times. That feels exactly the same. That's cool. And then that opens up like that, just like the original one did. You don't want to put the arms down to the sides like that. Straighten the, uh, the tail up if you haven't already. He's got some fists in his forearms that you can pull out on both sides. And this part's really cool. Not like the G1 version. These come out and swing up to form his chest. And that, that fits awesome. I was wondering if that would keep popping apart like it did in dino mode, but that seems good. I like that there isn't anything to do with the dino arms. Nothing really complicated or intricate to do there. And you split the legs. It's again, very similar to the G1, I'm trying to figure out a spot to split them and swing the, uh, the tail end in behind like that. And that's about it. Just secure everything. This thing back here, I think, looks like it's on a double hinge. So you can tuck it up like that out of the way a little bit. And you can weapon him up. So this gun doesn't actually have a handle so that he can hold onto it like a, like Grimlock held his original double blaster. You can separate it and then you can plug them onto the uh, sides of his forearms right here. Again, different from the original. Just shimmy that one on there and pop that one on there like that or the other way backwards. Um, cool thing about doing that, popping them onto the forearms, is that it frees the hands up for the sword. This thing looks really tiny in his hand. I think that's the Grimlock sword, the, uh, the G1 style Grimlock sword, but it, it's, a, it's a little small for Grimlock. So if, if you have a spare, bigger uh, Grimlock sword, it would probably look a lot better than that. And then if you go with this monster right here, it's funny, the peg is actually the right size whoa that that is humongous so you can have, either have a little little tiny toothpick or a, a faux hammer the predaking hammer is what you could call that that is wow ginormous and here he is alongside a g1 grimlock in robot mode Lots more articulation in the new one than the original one. And taking a closer look at G1 Grimlock's sword, I think actually this one might be the uh, the sword intended for this Grimlock, but it, it's still really tiny. 
little toothpicker right there. Tons of articulation in this uh, new modern Grimlock. Head can go left and right and look up and down a little bit, up a bit. Shoulders are great, look at that. Fantastic. Awesome, tons of elbow articulation, double jointed elbows. Like you see a lot of double jointed knees. This guy's got huge range in his uh, elbows. Splits, yes. Um, plus this extra joint that no real people have. Uh, ab extension, I guess. Like uh, Inspector Gadget, go, go, Grimlock, abs. And no uh, double jointed knees, but uh, fine articulation back there, ratcheting joints, which will help them stand quite a bit. And a twist in there too, in the knee as well. So you can actually get quite a few really nice dynamic poses. That's cool. It's kind of like Superman. Um, it'd be funny if he had like the symbol inside. You can have him burst his chest open or I guess if you have a chest burster from aliens you can do that too and if you want to combine the gun and have it be on one of his forearms then you can do that too kind of reminds me of uh, razor claw actually how thick razor claws gun is when you attach it onto him so that's Grimlock in robot mode let's take a look at some of the other dinos and your slag here he is alongside his G1 counterpart. G1 is a little thicker, a little more um, powerful looking. So I'm assuming that has to do with uh, Slag having to be one of the limbs of Volcanicus. Nice detail in the face. I like that they went with the, the clear gold style plastic on there. Lots of articulation on the, uh, on the legs too. On the front legs at least. Um, oh those do bend. The the hind ones do bend a little bit. I wonder if the tail moves. Oh as part of the transformation it looks like it pops out. And the horns twist around as well. And you can take one of the blasters and plug it into the back leg into slag or plug uh, both of these. They're identical. So if you want a little bit of symmetry you can plug them onto there. That looks pretty cool. Again, like, like Grimlock, it helps to um, thicken him up a bit since we're so used to seeing him so thick. Or there's another hole on the top here. So you could have a uh, top mounted gun on there, make him look like a target master. Or there's some holes there too, lots of options. I don't know how that looks. I think I'm on his front legs, but the choice is yours. So to transform him, get your thumbnail in that tail like so many G1 Dinobots and you have to swing those out like that and then instructions say that flips like that. So Make sure you got enough clearance on the tail here. Instructions <laughs> go on forever. Look at all these. And double-sided too. So, yeah. <laughs> A lot of instructions here. You're going to need them. And then there's these that come out. I think they um, are like for the heel so that it doesn't fall back. This one is, uh, oh, there we go. That works. Uh, pull the legs apart if you haven't already. And then these tail ends get swung in and hidden into the legs like that. Tuck them a little bit out of the way. You're going to want to collapse these as much as you can. These little dino legs. Swing the arms down. Pull the fists out of the forearms on both sides. Those are pretty tight. There we go. I'm assuming this folds down like that to reveal Redhead. 
Canadian version of Slag. And you can give him a weapon. Now he's got this dino toe, dino claws thing right here on his forearm, but uh, luckily it doesn't run into the gun. No problems there. And then this sword looks a bit better in this smaller Slag. He's uh, quite a bit smaller than Grimlock. Um, still on the small side though, even with Slag being a little smaller, the sword is still a little on the small side. And here he is alongside his G1 counterpart. Yeah, he uh, he's definitely better proportioned, the newer one. It's cool that it's generally the uh, the same look. The feet are in the right spot. Um, the tail isn't tucked in behind like that, but you know he's got the horns up on the top. I like that they were able to carry so much of uh, his G1 robot uh, version into this version. And for his articulation, looks like he's got great uh, shoulders as they all do. Doesn't have double jointed elbows like Grimlock does. Um, not much articulation in the knee. Splits, not quite. Can get his foot up quite a bit though. And uh, oh, he's got swivel arm battle grip. He's got the G.I. Joe swivel arm. That's, that's a nice uh, touch right there. Head actually moves. Look at that. It's hard to get at because of all the dino stuff going on in there. But uh, he can look left and right a little bit. That's cool. And uh, I'm especially curious to see how he sizes up to Grimlock. Holy smokes, that's awful. Look at how much smaller slag is. Oh, wait a second. I, I grabbed the wrong one. That's Masterpiece Grimlock. Don't take life too seriously. You won't get out of it alive. Um, that's not so bad, actually, compared to Masterpiece Grimlock. Still weird that um, having a Dinobot be bigger than another Dinobot. I'm, I'm so used to just swoop. I've got some of the um, Fans Toys Dinobots over there. Uh, so used to swoop being the smallest of the Dinobots because he's the bird. But uh, in this case, because he is a combiner, they've had to go the aerial bot or um, protect a bot route and make Grimlock the uh, biggest of them with the limbs smaller. So I, I think this guy will be kept in um, combined mode anyway because he's the only set of Dinobots I have that can do that. Up next is Sludge, who is pretty true to his G1 version. No chrome on the new guy. Man, the chrome on the original one really pops. But they're uh, pretty close in size too. Height, length, everything pretty similar. This one has holes everywhere as well. So you can plug a gun there or yeah, even there too. And there's no uh, neck articulation, I guess, unless you do that, so you can reach up a little bit, but then you got that huge gap there. So that's that's just part of the transfer. Oops, transformation. And he does have a, an articulated jaw, very slight though. It doesn't look like it actually opens up very much. Oh, there's a hole in there too. I wonder if you can fit the. Uh, gun in there it looks like a hole for uh, oh yeah look at that you can fit that in there as well that's awfully weird looking but you have a chin gun and to transform sludge first step is to turn the legs all the way up like that the wrong way and then you want to split the tail again get that thumbnail in there there's some um, tabs down here too that make it a little bit easier if you just grab them onto there and then you're going to want to turn that down like that and do these twist out? Yes they do. Twist out like that and the instructions show the legs going like that old school G1 Dinobot style um, these legs don't look like they collapse. There's no joint there. And then these, similar to slag. I like the, um, the repetition going on here. You can, uh, 
turn these split tail pieces in and pop them in there. Although that, I don't know if that's really going to work. Well, actually, yeah, it does. They kind of act as a heel that prevent him from falling back. G1 Grimlock had a major problem with that. His uh, feet were just too long and flat. So that kind of helps turn these up out of the way like that. I'm going to twist the whole waist around like that. And uh, there are actually some uh, black heel tabs. So they feel like they stop there, but give it some more force. It almost feels like you're going to break it, but it's just kind of on a spring. Right there is the sticking point right there. And um, push that in like that. So this part opens up, much like many of the other Dinobots forming uh, kind of wings on the back. Move the arms down, the uh, fists come out just like the other guys. Pop that out like that. Um, ah, okay. Once you get the arms down, you're going to want to twist at the bicep because uh, that fist is upside down right there. So turn like that. And then head goes back, uh, like in G1, and you got sludge in robot mode. And you can give him some weaponry. This is the only gun that fits. This gun sort of does, just, just by a hair, actually. Memories of G1 Optimus Prime, not really all that great. This way, about the same. So the claw gets in the way. Or you can give them one of the, uh, the swords. That kind of gets in the way as well, actually, unless you pop it in that way. That's interesting. Or, I don't know if this one will fit. It does, actually. You can uh, give them the supersized Predaking Cleaver. Yeah, in a comparison with his G1 version, about the same height actually. Very close. Really good, uh, good rendition of Sludge. Definitely a nice homage to the original version. Articulation is going to be the same as Slag and all the other guys, I'm assuming. Same type of uh, elbow joint, and he's got no swivel actually. He doesn't have a swivel in his, well, he does in the hip, but not down there near the knee. But still capable of some pretty dynamic poses. Uh, head doesn't go up or down. But for the, uh, the class uh, style, that this guy is in. He's not a masterpiece. He's not a studio series or anything like that. Um, the articulation is pretty awesome. Next up is Snarl. And the instructions show that you can attach a sword to his side for some reason. Uh, the other sword also, well, has a really tiny peg, which this particular Snarl doesn't have any holes that size. He's, uh, I guess he can do a donkey kick or that thing that dogs do after they've gone to the bathroom on your lawn. Uh, nice articulation in the, in the hind legs, actually, with Snarl. His uh, G1 self has always just been a hunk of immovable, immobile plastic, which this is a KO, so he's... Uh, he, like, yeah, he's just kind of coming apart at the seams. Uh, so this snarl, I guess the, the big difference I can see between the two is that the head is really tiny on this guy compared to uh, the original one. But pretty much the same same design you know, based on the same dinosaur. Uh, but the coloration, it looks like they've tried to repeat it close. You know, red here, red here. Um, give this guy a transformation. So first step is these front legs 
go back like this on both sides. Take the head and flip it down like that. And this part in here opens up. Just got to figure out where to grab it. I wonder if this... Ah, it does. So just like the original one, his head splits again. And I'm trying to open this part up somehow like that. Flip that open like that. And once again, that G1 Dinobot leg style of transformation. Just swing them down like that and close up the back like that. Flip the, uh, the head down. There's actually a tab there that catches on like that. Cool. And his arms, hands flip out like all the other guys like that. Turn them down. There's some movement here. So that's dino mode, I'm guessing. And and that's robot mode. And then this part right here, kind of similar to the original one. And you move the plates out of the way, swing this down a bit, and split that apart like that. The head is in here somewhere. There it is. I like that you don't have to closely follow the instructions. It certainly helps with these guys, but you can... Uh, you can figure some stuff out as you go. And uh, guns, either gun will um, will fit with him. He doesn't have the claw issue that uh, the other guys have. Or you can give him a sword. Him, like the other guys, looks a little on the tiny side for him. He does have a swivel. It's funny how some of these guys have that swivel, which makes a big difference with um, legs when you're posing them. And you can keep these plates up if you want, or you can pop them down. They got little pegs on there for the, the blast effects that all the Transformers have these days. Um, looks like these arms actually need to go up like that. and They click into place. And he's got little spikes in behind him like the original one did. And let's bring in the original. Whoops, this has always been a a loose gun on this KO. And it's definitely nice to have a little bit more articulation with the new guy, because the old one was just straight up and down and kind of weird looking. And Snarl is one of the uh, less well-proportioned original Dinobots, because he's got the extra skinny legs and his arms look kind of weird. I think the proportions on this snarl are a little bit better. Um, it would have been nice if these could have, in the transformation, somehow been turned around so that this was displayed instead of what we're seeing here with the screws. All that would have needed is some kind of a, like a twist in here just to make that be able to turn around. And the last one is Swoop, who is a... Uh, a pterodon, pterodactyl uh, head goes up like that if you want him sort of in flying mode. Stick his feet out a little bit. Uh, wings have a little bit of articulation in there. And a uh, comparison with G1 Swoop. The wingspan on the original one. Let's actually compare and see, it's, it's exactly the same. Their, uh, their wingspan is identical, actually. It's just that the G1 is uh, chrome back metal, so it looks a lot more dazzling compared to the flat gray. It would have been cool if there was there were some holes in here that you could attach the weaponry. I guess it's not too hard to, uh, to drill a hole. It looks like there's a little bit of a tab right there, but I'm not sure that's... That's for weaponry. And the instructions show this sword that has this little peg right here will actually fit in uh, in the hole underneath Swoop's mouth. That's a pretty cool look. Deadly beak right there. Once you put that in there though, um, it 
limits a little bit of how far down his his head can look. So to transform swoop, take the feet and swing them back like that, and they should just plug right in there securely. And take the wings and fold them in as much as you can like that. Take the uh, the beak and poke it down like that, just like the original one. There's the uh, swoop head pointing out. I always loved that Swoop's robot head was also part of his uh, dino mode head. It's got the same spike on the back there, and that is definitely Swoop. Really nice rendition of Swoop's head. Pop the arms out and swing the fists out. Looks like that needs to twist like that. And the same deal on the other side. These little tabs right here are awesome if you've got a thumbnail. And now we need the legs. So this is very reminiscent of the original swoop. Just unhook from the back and pop the feet up like that. And it feels like there should be more, but there isn't. That's it. He is done in uh, robot mode. And again, he's got a little swivel right there. That's cool. Looks like he's he's got more range in his legs than some of the other Dinobots. Good knee bend there. Swoop's one of the smaller, well, he's the smallest Dinobot. So uh, it makes sense that he would be the most live, well-articulated one, although he doesn't have much articulation in his elbow there. And if you want, you can open up the wings even more and here's what he looks like with some weapons I think of all the Dinobots these swords look the, the nicest with swoop just because he's he's a little smaller than the other guys and here he is with G1 swoop and he's actually a little bit bigger than G1 swoop who was pretty tiny um, quite a different look um, actually did I forget a step? Do these fold in? Doesn't look like it. They fold up a little bit for a pteranodon, pterodactyl mode, but uh, they don't go all the way and flip out. But it's nice that you can push them back, get them out of the way for them. So that's swoop with his original version. And here's how they all measure up to each other. So they're all about the same size. In fact, Swoop might even be a little bit, well, he's about the same size as um, Slag, but might be a little taller than Sludge. And then Grimlock is definitely the biggest of all of them. But if one is going to be bigger than all of them, then it definitely should be Grimlock. And now here comes the part that I've been looking forward to. Assembling them, combining them all into Volcanicus. So I've got all the dino limbs all prepared now to combine. Uh, just a couple of things I want to uh, mention if, you're, if you've got one of these and you're trying to do it. Um, you need to swivel at the bicep because I was looking on the instructions trying to figure out how did they get this to go the other way. It won't go any more than that. And then I remembered that unlike the G1 guys these biceps do swivel really nice thing about uh, all of these guys is that much like uh, Devastator they've uh, got little pegs everywhere that kind of show you where everything is supposed to go and kind of hold into place so that's nice this is looking awesome um, really really strong Predaking vibe here check this out I love that the head is in the Grimlock body. You don't actually have to pop it on like Predaking. And it looks so much like Grimlock. And it's got pieces of Grimlock, like his little dino arms are going to be there. So we're going to connect these now. He's got these giant posts that plug into Grimlock. And I think you just slide them on like that. Oh, that's so much nicer than plopping it down. Because uh, I, I broke a peg on my G1 Predaking. At least it's a KO of a G1 Predaking. Um, just by uh, 
pressing down like that. Uh, this seems a lot more secure and less susceptible to breakage. I'm not sure if it's supposed to click once you get it all the way in or or if it's just supposed to hold like that good enough. I, I don't think it's going to slide out. Oh man, he's starting to look awesome. This is what it's all about. So awesome. Slide the arm down on that. Nice tight ratchet joints. Oh, I forgot to swing out the uh, the post on a swoop. And these are really strong joints on here. Slide that one on there. And he needs his weaponry. I was wondering if these combine somehow to make an even bigger sword, but I don't think they do. Oh, uh, one more thing I wanted to mention about the hands. If you get two of the same hand, don't freak out because they're actually ambidextrous. You can see, I was trying to figure out what, can I s flip the thumb somehow, but this whole piece comes out. See that? It's, it's like double jointed, so you can make one a left hand and another one a right hand. Sword uh, plugs in to the side of the fist with this post right here. Nice. Uh, like that. I don't know if he'll actually... Oh, cool. Yeah, there is. There's a hole right there. So you can feed the sword right through like that. And um, so let's see here. Both arms are the same. So where the elbow joint should be, it isn't. It's, uh, it's going the wrong way. Kind of like cup, G1 cup. If you want it to go the right way, then you just turn it like that and then turn the fist. Easy fix. Just the only thing is it, it doesn't look like the official configuration, but I would rather have that elbow articulation. And there he is with his swords, which help to fill him out a little bit because he is a little on the spindly side, on the thin side, I guess. G1 Predaking sort of was around the middle as well. And uh, the weapons, you can actually, you can find spots to plug them in all over the place. Nice to have some blasters on the arms always. Uh, I don't see any more on swoop, but the, the fist has a hole on it so you can have a a fist blaster almost like Fort Max and I like this use of the dual blasters you plug them into the back of the feet and they actually serve as heels to help him not fall backwards and there's a couple of fists down there so you, maybe you could even plug the swords in there. I might not have everything configured exactly uh, as it is in the instructions and I'm always okay with that. I'll give the official configuration a shot and then try something else and just decide on my own which one looks better. So you can have him wielding his swords which look amazing especially with a little bit of light on them passing through them translucent orange plastic or maybe to help fill them out even more pull that out there uh, they actually do attach onto his back as well so there's all sorts of holes back here all sorts of pegs here it does look like you can uh, do it either way so yeah that just plugs in like that you want you can have him holding one sword that's probably better for his balance two swords makes him pretty front heavy or you can remove both they're in there good and tight pop the second one in the back that's one of the best back sword plug-in designs I've seen it gets in there really nice and, and snug uh, these legs, it's basically Grimlock's legs, so all the articulation Grimlock had, Volcanicus will have as well. He 
he's uh, he's got a lot of range, especially for a Gestalt. Tons of of range articulation, and I was just about to ask if anyone knew where this part went because it was included with all the guns and stuff. But I just realized by looking at the other fist that it plugs into the fist there. So that's that mystery solved. And I think the most appropriate first comparison is his G1 counterpart, Predaking, or at least a really cheap floppy KO of Predaking. So Predaking's got the giant bulky limbs and then just kind of a, a small torso, thinner torso. That's what they were trying to avoid here by giving him smaller limbs, but they weren't these big giant limbs hooked all onto a smaller body. Volcanicus isn't meant to fit in with G1 Transformers, it's just sometimes I like displaying more modern Transformers with vintage ones. Sometimes you get some really, really nice combinations like Scorponok with uh, Fortress Maximus. There's Scorponok's head peeking out down there. And another G1 Gestalt, Gestalt. Giant comparison, he is quite a bit bigger than G1 Superion as he should be. If I, uh, if a Dinobot combiner existed, you would think that it would be a lot bigger than G1 counterparts. And here he is with a couple of big boys with Devastator. I can never remember if he was from, what is he? I think he was Combiner Wars, Power of the Primes, I think, Predaking, along with a couple of upgrades to, uh, to fill that uh, waste out. That seems to be an issue with a lot of official Hasbro combiners. The waste is just a little too thin. So I don't know if there's upgrades for this guy to fill him out a bit. I would imagine so. But he is uh, quite a bit smaller than some of the other modern Transformers. He's a scale that um, it's, it's not a masterpiece scale. It's more of a G1 scale. So um, to display him, I, I would put him with... The G1 Transformers would probably look really cool behind your five G1 Dinobots, which is what I'm going to try right now. Now that is pretty cool, and it adds a little bit of chrome to the whole display since Volcanicus has no chrome on them, but there's plenty of chrome on the G1 Dinobots. I really like how that looks. So you can have, actually probably even better to arrange these guys in the order that they appear on Volcanicus, so got an arm over here and leg there. This snarl is just such a piece of crap. So that is Volcanicus. Finally, the Dinobot Combiner. If you ever wondered what the Dinobots would look like when they combined, this I think is a pretty good representation of what he would look like, especially the head. I like the crown on it, me Grimlock King. Kind of makes sense that once combined with the Dinobots, Grimlock would truly look like a king. So once again, thanks Bill so much for sending that along. That was very generous of you. I'd really like for you to be able to enjoy this as well because it is quite a bit of fun transforming them all, assembling them all, trying to get them to stand. So uh, if you'd uh, like me to send them along to you, so that you can play around with them a little bit, please let me know. I'd be happy to do that for you. And thank you all for watching. Until next time, to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Nerdmas Day.